We're back here live at the Wild and Scenic Film Festival celebrating our 10th anniversary. Thousands upon thousands of activists, filmmakers, and film goers have all converged in the little town of Nevada City, California to celebrate making a difference, celebrating our planet. And we've been talking to extraordinary people who are truly making a difference over this weekend and beyond. I'm Elisa Parker. It's our pleasure to have another incredible activist with us today, John Trudell, who has been active for over 40 years, at least as far as I know, um, doing work around the American Indian movement um, as a musician, a film, an actor, a writer, a poet. John, it's such a pleasure to have you here with us. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Right? Yeah. Appreciate it. So, John, I'm curious. This is your first year at Wild and Scenic Film Festival. Yes. And I'm curious if you could take a, a few minutes to talk about the uh, confluence of environmental activism and Native American activism. Well, I think if there's a mutual understanding about the reality of the Earth and our responsibility to taking care of the U.S. Mm -hmm. right? And I, I think that the environmentalist, what I perceive as an environmentalist mindset and mentality is they're developing that sense of responsibility to, in varying, to varying degrees. And I think that with Native people, we've, we've, we still have that sense of responsibility ingrained in us because the civilizing process hasn't been here long enough to completely erase that sense of responsibility. And so to me, it's like an emerging, it's emerging, it's an emerging, merging sense of responsibility towards taking care of the planet. Right. And, and in that, I see that there's a, I guess what I would call a mutual understanding that the earth really is our mother. So it's, I look at it as a sense of responsibility that, that we're a, attempting to understand and attempting to fulfill. John, your, um, your, the documentary you're featured in, Trudell, is actually being featured here at the Wild and Scenic Film Festival this year. And kind of just looking, overlooking your lifespan and the work that you've been doing, um, both some challenges and celebrations. When you look at that now and moving forward, is there anything that you've shifted in the way that you're um, operating in the world now as a result of the work that you've done? And, and has that changed as far as your political activism? And well, I'm gonna funnel that down to did I learn anything? Yeah. <laughs> and, did I, and did I change anything from what I learned? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, the li I've learned a lot. I mean, there are many things I would, I would approach it differently now than I would have 20 years ago or 30 years ago because my levels of understanding and experience, to me experience gives us opportunities to have understanding or it gives us opportunity to be completely befuddled. I like to think that I got some understanding as a result of my experience. It's like an example being is that I spent a long time developing the idea of pride, being proud of who we are. You know, and now when I look back, I kind of question that because it's, well, pride kind of seems to be the main thing that's getting in everybody's way about getting real things accomplished. You know, so, I mean, that's one, as one example of things that I have learned, you know, you know, it's like we spend a lot of time wanting to know the answers. And, and what I've learned is, well, you know, maybe knowing isn't enough. Maybe we need to understand what we know because I don't think we're taking enough time to understand. You know, we're too eager to know an answer, to hear an answer, right? But, but it seems to me that if we were taking the time to understand what we know, I think that we would individually, collectively, generate more clarity and coherence. Now, so for me along the way, the, yeah, I've learned, you know, uh, because, because I think as we age, have our experiences in age, someone if we reached the point where we just didn't change our ways, then we didn't learn anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's, we didn't, didn't. And, and, and evolution is about learning and then about understanding. 
you know, and and that, otherwise, if you if you don't learn and understand, if there's if this kind of sensibility to me isn't happening within us, then you know we were stagnant. It's just you know, anyway, that's so. My experiences have taught me to learn from my experience, mm -hmm. and then take some at some point try to understand what I learned. I mean, I mean, you know, because what I mean about this knowing and understanding. Do I know how a TV works? Yeah, I know how a TV works. Plug it in and turn it on. Do I understand how they make that happen? Like, no. Yeah. And it gets a little crazier too because with technology, I mean, we're surrounded by it right now. It's just harder and harder to listen, you know? So when you think back to like the next generation, the young, you know, we have some younger um, students here today. So when you think about what it is you want them to learn and going forward, because it's hard to listen to that sometimes with all the outside noise. I mean, what are your suggestions or advice about that? Well, I would say for young people, but I, I think this kind of generally applies in, in a lot sure. of contexts. But I think young people need to be encouraged to understand that there's nothing wrong with them. Mm. That it's okay to like themselves, that there's not anything wrong with them. So you tell, I, I really think <laughs> young people, everybody, but looking at young people, because I think the younger they are, the better, once this understanding is put there, that there's, not, there's nothing wrong with them. You know, no matter, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with them. They're, they're, they're here. They're, it's like life is sacred, and they're, they're a part of that sacredness. And they have a real understanding. Because I think that too many people, as adults, go through this life, participating in this life, thinking there's something wrong with them. Self doubt, but they, they think sure. there's something wrong with them. But, that, but see, they didn't get that understanding or that perception as adults. It happened to them as children. So I, I think it's about young people understanding that there's nothing wrong with them, to understand the reality of the power of their creative intelligence, and to understand how to use that with some clarity and coherency. But, that, but in order for those things to happen, you really gotta, there really needs to be, there's nothing wrong with them. And there really has to be an understanding about that. Mm -hmm. I, and then all the rest of it, how you communicate, see all the rest of that then becomes more yeah. realistic. You're the way you're supposed to be yeah. right now. Yeah. So how do you feel that that can be communicated best? I mean, in the past, we've tried to communicate that through traditional education systems. You know, we've, we've got to change in the, the way we talk about it in pop psychology. But, you know, it, as far as a culture, like, we're going through major shifts right now. How, how can we start to It's an individual that? thing. It's like, we got to show it to them. <laughs> So how do, how do we get them to understand that? Then we understand that there's nothing wrong with us. Mm -hmm. See, it, it's, it's, it starts from in here. We, mm -hmm. are, we need to have that understanding before we can truly... Com we can say it to them as words and concepts, but if we don't have the understanding, then the words and concepts that we're communicating won't have the understanding. Yeah. So it's something that we... I figure, how do we do... Take responsibility for our intelligence, and do the best that we can with the best that we have as often as we can with that sense of responsibility of our intelligence. And I think that that's how we go about this. You know, it starts on an individual basis, you know, you know because power, power of creative, our creative intelligence. You ever had the experience of feeling powerless? And then while you're feeling powerless, how bad can you make yourself feel with your fears, your doubts, and the insecurities? And then how does that affect the people you interact with? Well, see, that's power. So, you know, so that's power that's being generated by the creative intelligence, but then we're sitting around in this delusion that I don't have any power, and then using our power to do this stuff to ourselves and the people we interact with. So, if there was this understanding about, about the power of our creative intelligence used with some clarity, we could generate a whole other kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So what, yeah, what is creative intelligence? How did you describe that? What do I, we create our reality, we, how we, we create our reality every day by how we perceive it. And creative intelligence, creative intelligence, an example of creative intelligence, if I'm sitting around feeling I'm worthless and I'm not good enough and will people like me, right, and just beating myself. That's what psych shows up for you. Yeah, but that's, I'm using my creative intelligence to create that reality, all right? Or if I use my creative, I can use my creative intelligence, well, hey, you know, there's nothing wrong, I'm okay, and you know, this is how it needs to be approached. I can use it in a healthy way 
the way nature intended me to use it, or I can use it in an unhealthy way, the way those that predatory class that feeds off of me programmed me yeah. to use it. Or the but media we, use, we can't help but us. use it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so it's about yeah. So it's about us deciding that. But again, it comes back to there's nothing wrong with me. As a human being, there's nothing wrong with me. All right, and, and then proceeding from there. When you grew up, did you ever have a feeling there was something wrong with you, or what was your? <laughs> no, I never. <laughs> what I never was your? Really. I mean, what was your <laughs> childhood like? You know, with your parents. I mean, obviously, you're in a pretty powerful place now. And I say powerful, meaning not like o power over. Yeah. But like power too. Well, my childhood. I mean, in some ways, I wanted to escape my childhood, so I did it with my daydreams. I dream. Mm -hmm. I, I would learn how to dream in the daytime. And I, and I still, that's how I deal with reality. I, I don't get lost in fears and self-doubts. I just, to me, I call it dreaming. I think, what, what I, You create the reality yeah, you yeah, see that, that, that's, yeah. I create a reality that makes yeah, me feel yeah. better. Right? Because that makes more sense to me than creating a reality that makes me feel bad. Yeah. That, and I learned that as a kid. All right, but, but the, it, so, um, I forget what you first asked on that now. I got lost. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, you were just talking about creative intelligence and, oh, and, and feeling, feeling like, bad. Not, yeah, feeling like yeah. you didn't have worth. And I was just curious how that stemmed well, from, oh, you know, yeah, as yeah. far as your own creation around but that. I never it. felt, I mean, it, I, I can't, I don't consciously remember hmm. not liking myself. So gotcha. I guess, yeah, yeah I mean, I, it's the best, I've always liked myself. I'm not, the best I can remember, you know, I've always liked myself. There are times I haven't liked what happened to me. Sure. I haven't liked what I've done, but I've never not liked myself because, because I needed me to like me. Yeah. <laughs> if nothing else, I needed me to like me. There was a lot champion. of unfair stuff going on around me, you know, and all that. This is, right? You see, so I never had that as a, I mean, is, in my mind, I've always known who I am. I've never questioned who I am. Right? I, I, that's never, I de I've never had an identity crisis, and I've always liked myself. And, and, and I don't know how to, you know, and I, and I went through some variable realities as a child. You know, I, I mean, I'm not saying I had an unhappy childhood, and I'm not saying I had a happy childhood. I had that childhood where you had to juggle reality, man. Yeah. You had to juggle the yeah. stuff around, right? And I got through it. And I, and I wanted to get out of where I was at, and I did. I got out as soon as it was practical for me to get out, but I didn't feel traumatized. I didn't drag a lot of drama. I just knew I needed, when I was a kid, I knew I wanted to get out of here as soon as I can, and then when I could get out, I got out. But I didn't drag any drama or trauma with me. I just went out and experienced my life. And, yeah, just present. Know, and then whatever got ingrained in, in, in the behavior patterns and stuff got ingrained. Yeah.